Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to dive a bit deeper into loops and look at input validation and a user controlled loop. So you will see that I created, I'm on my desktop, I created a new, or I have a folder called dot projects. I'm inside of that folder. I created loop calculations folder and I have gone into that folder. So I'm currently in the loop calculations folder and I'm going to create a new project in Visual Studio Code by just saying code, a space and dot. Right, and now once we are in that folder in Visual Studio Code, I'm going to create four files here, but for this video only two, and that will be input validation. So I'm going to use input underscore validation. And remember your dot dot at the end, input validation. We will have another one that we will call user controlled dot dot. And let's let's create the other two also for the next video, and that will be running totals dot dot and we will also have sentinel values dot dot right so we're going to have four files inside of this folder uh, or inside of this project folder of ours and we're going to have a look at some useful operations that we can do using loops so the first one is input validation so let's go to input validation let's add our main method there Remember, for any program to start, there needs to be a main method. So we will have basically four different programs running here. So for input validation, we'll need some input from the user. So I'm going to have a simple example where we will just ask the user, please enter a number in the range of, let's say, 1 through 100. Now let's get back what the user asked or what we asked the user, and that is basically just a number. So I'm going to declare it as int. And you remember now, in order to get back values from the user, so if we use the stdin and we use the method called readLineSync, that gives us the input. So just make sure that you've got the input at the top, but that gives us a string input. So we read from the keyboard whatever the user types, and it gets back as a string. We convert that string to an integer. So now we have the number. So how can we now use this to validate the input of the user using a while loop. So I'm going to use a while loop there and I'm going to check if the number or while the number is less than one. So if it's inside of the range of one through 100, one of the previous videos, we looked at something being between two values and also something being outside two values. So this is now in the range of one through 100. If it's not in that range, we want to keep on asking the user to enter a correct number. So outside of the range means the number must be less than 1 or the number must be greater than 100. Right, so what do we want to do then while the number is less than 1 or the number is greater than 100? So it's outside the range of 1 to 100. So less than 100, oh, sorry, less than 1 means 0 and negative values and more than 100 means 101, 102 and so forth. So if it's any of those values, we want to keep on asking the user uh, for the correct value. So we can say something like there in the print statement, the number is not valid and then we can print out again because now he needs to actually give us that same value again so i'm going to ask him to do that again please enter a number in the range of 1 through 100 and now we need to get that number again so i'm going to copy that and just paste it there so we're asking the user please enter a number in the range of 1 through 100 we get the number we test while that number is less than 1 or greater than 100, which means less than 1, greater than 100, outside of what we want. We print the number is not valid and we ask again, please enter a number in the range of 1 through 100 and we get that number again from the user. And now at the end, as soon as we are done and it gets out of this loop, we actually know that they have entered a valid number so we can say something like uh, the number that was entered is valid now let's just look at this uh, loop again remember that we have three three things that we need to look at when we're using a loop and that is the first thing is we need to initialize the loop control variable so our loop control variable in this case is number so we've initialized declared and initialized it gave it an initial value 
Then the second part is the testing part. So there we're testing the loop control variable. And very important not to get an infinite loop is to check whether also we have changed that loop control variable. And we did. So let's just quickly run this one. You can save it and open up your terminal. You can just go to the terminal menu at the top and click terminal again. Right, so we are inside of the loop calculations folder and we want to run input validation. So we're going to say dot input validation dot dot and run it. Please enter a number in the range of 1 through 100. So let's say I'm going to enter 400. It will tell me the number is not valid because it's higher than 100. Please enter a value in the range of 1 through 100. So if I say minus 100, that is actually less than 1. So the number will still not be valid. But if I enter anything between 1 and 100, like a 50, it will tell me 50 is valid. So what's happening here is that the loop will keep on running while it sees that the number is less than 1 or the number is greater than 100. It will keep on executing, executing until it gets a number that is actually between 1 and 100 and then it will exit the loop and print out that number is valid. Right, let's uh, look at the next one and that will be user controlled loops. So in this one, let's also get a main method. Uh, later on, we'll look at how can we work between different files so we don't need to run every single one of them um, individually. So in the main method, we're going to print out just a simple example also. How high should I go to square numbers? So we're asking the user a question. How many times should we run the loop? And that's a user controlled loop. So we're asking the user how many times should we actually do the loop? So I'm going to get an integer number back to get the number of times that he tells us to actually execute the loop and we're going to use the int dot pass because we know that getting input from the keyboard which is stdin dot read line sync that gives me back a string value and that string value needs to be converted to an integer in order to get the number of times that's declared as an integer. So you'll also see that the import statement was added automatically at the top. If it did not add automatically, you can just add it at the top. Right, so let's print us uh, some headings, although it won't look that good. At least we've got something there, so we can have value and maybe add a few, a few tabs there and have value squared. All right, let's print also just a simple line there. It seems like a line. Right, let's go to the for loop now. So why am I using a for loop? Because I know exactly how many times I want to execute the loop. So a for loop will just work easier, but you can also use a while loop. So I'm going to start off with integer i equals 0. i less than the number of times that we want to run this loop. And then we're going to have i++. Okay, so we're going to start at 0 while the i, which is the loop control variable, is less than the number of times we want to run. So if we want to start off with a value of a 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, we can actually start i at 1 and we go up until the number of times. So if I say I want to run this loop 3 times, or let's take 2 times, easy 1, and I'm going to go to from 1 up until 2 there, so this value number of times will be 2. So the first time it runs, i equals 1. Is 1 less than 2? Yes, it is. So it will it will print out what we want to print out. Then it increments. It makes the i a 2. Is 2 less than or equal to? Because of the equal sign, it's still true and it will print out the second time. So you can either start at 0 there but leave out the equal sign or you can start at 1 and add the equal sign. Then it will also run the exact same number of times but it makes more sense for us to actually start at a 1 there. Right, let's look at our print statement, which will be a very simple print statement, just to say printing out the value of i. So let's use dollar i, and let's add a few tabs there. Maybe like here. Yeah. Let's just add the dollar sign again, and then we want to do a calculation. So that's why I'll add the brackets there. I want to square that value, which means it's i multiplied by i to square it. 
Okay, so let's save this one and see if we can run it. So we're going to have dot and this is user underscore controlled dot dot. Right, so we're asking how high should I go to square numbers? Let's take six. And you can see, well, six, one, two, three, four, five, and six, one squared, two squared, three squared, four squared, five squared, and six squared. So this we call a user control loop. So we ask the user how many times should we execute the loop, and that number of times will be used actually in a for loop because a for loop is the one that is best suited if you want to execute something a specific number of times. And we know the number of times we want to execute, and that will become the value that we test for or test our loop control variable against in the for loop. And that's all for this video. See you in the next one.